Now, this is probably one of the most difficult intros I've ever had to read and one that I never believed I would have to. But this weekend, Comla Dumour died. Even saying those words feels totally unreal. My fellow presenter and friend here at BBC World News suffered what's believed to have been a heart attack. It is no exaggeration to say that he touched the lives of everyone who knew him. And from the reaction on social media, it seems he touched the lives of many he'd never met. He had it all. Brilliantly talented journalist, charming beyond belief, a thousand megawatt smile, a zest for life. Oh, and quite the most dapper man I ever knew. And so for me, the most important thing is to know what I'm talking about, to know the stories. And if there's a cool factor, I mean, it doesn't hurt, does it? <laughs> You're watching BBC World News. My name is Komla Dumont. How's that look? No? And on Tuesday, full coverage from the palace to the church to the streets of Amsterdam. Kickoff is just a few hours from now. And you know what? I do work for the BBC, but it's time for me to show my true colors. Yeah, like no. this over. Yeah. <laughs> And that's the latest BBC News. I'm Komla Dumont. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Just to say there will be a special tribute to Komla on Focus on Africa in just over an hour's time. But here now I'm joined by his close friend and colleague, uh, Peter Okwache, and our social media uh, producer, Samantha Barry. It has been a terrible, terrible day in this building. Peter, you knew him since you were students, I think. Yeah, um, I actually met Komla Kady, as I like to call him. I, I met him 25 years ago. We were both at university of Joss in central Nigeria together. I was already there, I was studying theatre and he came in to study medicine. But he liked football and basketball, you know, and we and actually believed he could become a professional footballer someday and you're gonna be a doctor or a footballer, make up your mind. You know, and then we split ways after I left school and then um, met up again at the BBC. You know, it's just funny how life could just turn a full circle. We met up at the BBC and we started working together again and, you know, um, it's just such a big, big shock. I mean, we worked together on Friday night on the programme Focus, you know, so it's a, it was a big shock. And I was with him uh, recently in South Africa for Mandela's funeral. I was in uh, Kenya in Nairobi with him for the Westgate Mall siege and that horrible story there. He was an extraordinary character because I've never seen him miserable, complaining, downhearted, and I have never heard him, I've heard him had fun at other people's expense, <laughs> but I've never heard him say bad words. He was a most generous colleague, wasn't he? Absolutely. I mean, I, I, I don't know how many times I've said this today, but, you know, Komla was truly a special person. He was, you know, he was gifted with, with, with humanity. He, he treated everyone as an equal. I mean... It, he, the story of a, as a journalist, the story, the, a president's story was just as important as the story of a market woman. And, you know, and he believed that both of them should weigh the same on his scale as a journalist. You know, he was, he was that kind of person. Cab drivers in, in, in Accra, in Ghana, were his friends, just like presidents. I mean, Samantha's going to tell us about all the people who've been tweeting uh, after his death, you know, but he was just such such a cool customer. And, uh, you know, look, I, 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 we were in South Africa together at the time of the Mandela funeral. Mm. Everyone wanted the big interviews with the Mandela family. Who did they give them to? <laughs> Kamla. Kamla. Of course. Uh, and, you know, just funny enough, last week, I mean... Uh, if he uh, wasn't so blooming lovely, <laughs> you could end up with quite a lot of pressure, professional jealousy I, I Well, you could, Kumla you Dumont. could, because on, on Monday, Monday, like, a week, exactly a week ago was the first time I'd seen him this year. I'd just come back uh, from a holiday in Nigeria, and I asked him, well, how did you manage? Because I know the whole world wanted that interview with uh, Mandela's daughter. How did you manage? And he said, Charlie. You know, that's the word he used for everyone. Uh, I said, Charlie, you know how we do this thing. You know how we do this thing, you know. But he was a gifted journalist. And it's, it's the manner, the affect he had with people. So people wanted to talk to him. Sam, I was, I was uh, parking my motorbike this morning and a guy in a big white van, he sees me. I've still got my crash helmet on. He sees me and says, and he pulls over, black guy, and he says, I was so sorry to hear about your colleague. What, he sounds the most amazing bloke. And I'm looking at a total stranger 
who probably didn't know Kumla until he read about him this weekend. He just seemed to have that effect on people. It, it's, it, you know, for her, us here at the BBC, we're grieving the loss of somebody that we all loved and we knew and we saw on a daily basis. But what's really touching is that tens of thousands of people that he never met or never interviewed that have taken to social media and first of all to express their shock and their sadness and then to talk about Kamla as a person and what they actually meant to him, to the market woman in Africa, to the fishermen and in particular for the African audience, those people tweeting and turning to social media, they're really, really outpouring of grief and tributes to Kamla, somebody they never met but just saw through a TV screen is, and heard on radio is extremely touching. We asked them yesterday to talk about the words that they would use to describe Kamla. What would the one words that you'd use to describe him? Nearly 2,000 people replied and one of the, the, the we've got I think of an image of that, um, of the words. Um, this is the reaction to people when they first heard the news so R.I.P. Kamla sad um, and then we asked people for the one word they'd use to describe Kamla and human was one that would come up a lot dedicated they talked about his voice his smile and he really touched people through that radio or through that TV he touches us on a daily basis here in the newsroom but he touched thousands of people around the world you know what John I mean for me one thing that stood up out about Kamla is, especially as an African journalist is he loved the continent he came from. And he knew that the way Africa had been covered over the last 30, 40 years wasn't the only story behind Africa. And he wanted us to tell the, the true story of Africa. You know, had to, uh, there's poverty, there's disease, there's war, but there's also progress, there's also development, there's also music, there's also culture. You know, and that's one thing I learned about him, that passion about Africa and the passion to tell the African story. And let that be his legacy that we here at the BBC continue to give it as much light and as much texture as Kumla did. Uh, his last message to me was to compliment me on a tie I was wearing. And I thought, <laughs> from style. Kumla, there could be no greater praise. There will be a tribute to Kumla Dumont on Focus on Africa at 17.30 GMT. From us, on a very sad day, 